Barcelona has some of the most unique and inspiring architecture in the world, so a tour of the city's parks, museums and churches is a must. Start your days off with tours of Antony Gaudi's whimsical architecture, including Casa Batillo, La Sagrada Familia and Park Güell. Grab lunch at the bustling Boqueria Market, then kick back and relax on the shores of La Barceloneta Beach with a cool cerveza or beer in hand, all the while enjoying a picturesque view of the Mediterranean. Sounds great. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 best things to do in Barcelona. And just wait till you see what's at number one that we're going to be showing in this video, something you would have never even have thought of, so make sure you watch till the end. Before we begin, you can help support our channel by becoming a member of this channel. Press the join button below. This will help us to bring you more awesome travel videos. So now, let's cut to the Spanish chase. At 10, Palau de la Musica Catalana, or Palace of Catalan Music. Barcelona's Palau de la Musica Catalana is considered to be a masterpiece of Catalan Art Nouveau. Built by architect Luis Domenech y Montaner, the palace earned the title of a UNESCO World Heritage Site for its striking architectural features. Outside, make sure to snap a few photos of the intricate mosaic pillars and the busts nestled atop some of them, which depict famous musicians such as Bach and Beethoven. The interior of the palace is even more of an eyeful, complete with mosaic pillars and intricate sculpture work of its own, as well as stained glass windows and beautiful motifs of flowers spread throughout. And you won't be able to miss the massive stained glass central skylight. It protrudes from the ceiling, believe it or not, treating the concert auditorium to plenty of natural light. Aesthetics aside, the Palace of Catalan Music is a hub for symphonic and choral music, and of course, Catalan musical arts. Travelers agree with the experts. The Palace of Catalan Music is an architectural marvel. Visitors thoroughly enjoyed admiring the many intricate details found throughout the music venue, saying even if you can't get tickets to a show, it's worth a visit just to see its magnificence in person. At 9, Museo Picasso, Picasso Museum. When you feel like you've hit your Gaudi limit, head to the Picasso Museum for a change of pace. While most people know Pablo Picasso for his distorted portraits, this museum displays his work on a timeline of sorts, allowing you to follow his progression from the more controlled works of his early years to the very whimsical paintings and sculptures from the end of his career. Make sure you dedicate plenty of time to Picasso. The museum itself holds several thousand pieces by him. Yes, thousands, including works from his famous Blue Period. The museum also explores the artist's lifelong relationship with Barcelona, explaining why he chose the city for his museum before he died. Travelers highly recommend a visit to the Picasso Museum, even if you aren't much into Picasso or art museums in general. Visitors appreciated the way the museum chronicled the art he created throughout his life. Not only that, but seeing his various styles on display made lots of travelers understand and further appreciate his talent after visiting the museum. Next up at 8, Cathedral de Barcelona, Barcelona Cathedral. Towering above the center of the Barry Gothic district is Barcelona's principal cathedral. The Gothic cathedral's construction began in the late 13th century, though it wasn't completed until the mid-15th century. Took its time then. While you're here, make sure to dedicate plenty of time to the numerous examples of artisanship that went into completing this cathedral, from its exterior details to the many gold furnishings within, including the stately altarpiece, part of the Church of St. Severas, as well as 140 statues of saints that call the cathedral home. While you're here, make sure to mosey on over to the cloister, which features a verdant tropical garden. If you have enough time, visitors highly suggest taking advantage of the opportunity to go to the top of the cathedral on the roof. There, visitors can get an eyeful of the spire up close, as well as some prime city views. At 7, Camp Nou Stadium. Even if you're not a football or soccer fan, Camp Nou is worth a visit to experience the pride Catalans have for the FC Barcelona team. Able to hold nearly 100,000 screaming fans, which can be quite intimidating for visiting teams, Camp Nou is the largest stadium in Europe. The on-site museum showcases trophies and awards the team has garnered through the years. Interesting and interactive displays invite visitors to learn a little more about the football culture and its impact on the city. 
For example, Catalans rallied behind the motto Mesque en Club, more than a club, during the oppressive Francisco Franco regime, becoming a symbol of striving for independence. Depending on which team they're playing, tickets to a game can be expensive, especially for El Clásico. However, visitors note that seeing the dedicated fans and watching some of the best soccer players in the world in action is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Travellers who did the tour had mixed emotions. For many Barcelona fans, visiting the stadium and getting a behind-the-scenes look at the club's day-to-day -day was a dream come true. Others, however, lamented the high cost of touring the stadium as well as its Disney-like extras, including going through gift shops and a mandatory photo op whose cost wasn't included in the ticket price. Others were disappointed they didn't have access to parts of the stadium, including players' locker rooms and access to the field. Players' locker rooms? At six, it's Casa Batillo. The details highlighted in Casa Batillo show famous Catalan architect Anthony Gaudi at his best. Of all the Gaudi apartments in Barcelona, this is probably the most recognized. It's also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Sitting down the street from Casa Milà, Casa Batillo is known for its vibrant colors, intricate tile work and skeletal terraces. The unconventional facade is inspired by the legend of St. George, whose story is famous for slaying a dragon to save the princess. The roof in particular depicts the dragon's scaly back, while the skeletal balconies and bony windows are said to represent the dragon's previous victims. The legend goes that someone would be sacrificed every day, so the dragon wouldn't take the whole town. After you've taken the time to absorb the monstrous amount of detail, see what we did there, used on the outside of the building, stop inside to tour the equally eye-catching interiors, including the noble floor, which was once home to the Batillo family. With your ticket, you're also able to access the roof to check out Gaudi's admirable mosaic work up close, including those on the dragon's back and the roof's many colorful chimneys. Travelers who visited Casa Batillo found it to be a masterpiece. While it may be tempting to stay outside and admire the house details for free, many visitors said it's more than worth the extra coin to explore the inside of the building. Next in at 5, La Sagrada Familia, Church of the Sacred Family. From 1882 up until his death in 1926, Catalan Art Nouveau master Antony Gaudi once again devoted himself to the construction of La Sagrada Familia, Church of the Sacred Family, a towering Gothic style with a twist church. And even then, he was unable to finish. Gaudi was known for saying, My client, God, is in no hurry. The church, which is funded by private donations, is still under construction today and is said to be completed by 2026. The Sagrada Familia is not only considered to be Gaudi's most recognized work, but also his best. Believe it or not, this church wasn't always Gaudi's. The architect that was first commissioned to do the church, Francesc del Pola Villar, was replaced after disagreeing with promoters of the church. When Gaudi took on the project, he changed it entirely. Instead of the original neo-Gothic style, he looked toward something more innovative. While the church does feature Gothic elements, there are plenty of unconventional details that deviate from that norm throughout, resulting in an eye-catching structure that is entirely one of a kind. At 4, Las Ramblas. The bustling thoroughfare is one of the city's major tourist hubs, so much so that if you're visiting Barcelona, you're bound to end up here eventually. Las Ramblas is a pedestrian-friendly pathway situated right smack dab in the middle of the city, so expect it to be busy all hours of the day and night. During the day, you can peruse souvenir stands, watch buskers and street performers, pick up some local art from artists selling on the street, or sit down and enjoy a light snack at one of the many alfresco cafes found here. When the sun sets, you should head here to start your night out, as many bars and clubs can be found in the surrounding area. While Las Ramblas has no doubt established itself as a visitor-friendly stop, it didn't always cater to tourists the way it does now. Soon after the nearly mile-long thoroughfare was developed in 1766, it became a popular place to hang out for locals. The reason for this has to do with its design. Back in the day, streets in Barcelona were predominantly narrow and windy, making the long and wide Las Ramblas unconventionally roomy. Today, the chances of finding locals congregating here fewer and farther between, especially during the day. At night, however, since it is a prime place to party, you'll likely see some more Catalans. Yeah. 
at 3 Bury Gothic, Gothic Quarter. The Bury Gothic or Gothic Quarter is the oldest part of Barcelona and considering its location next to the city centre, also its most liveliest. Here you'll find beautiful examples Roman and medieval era architecture rubbing elbows with the many shops, restaurants, alfresco cafes, bars and clubs that line this neighbourhood's narrow roads and picturesque plazas. And there are so many plazas to explore. Aside from Plaza de la Catedral, which you'll no doubt end up in if you visit the Barcelona Cathedral, make sure you stop in Plaza Real and the smaller and much quainter Plaza San Felipe Neri, which was bombed by Spanish dictator Francisco Franco during the Spanish Civil War. You can see scars from the attack on the church in the square. Another notable plaza is Plaza San Jaume, where the Catalan seat of government has been since the Middle Ages. No matter where you end up in the Gothic Quarter, travellers say its Spanish splendour will leave you charmed long after you leave. Visitors also say when visiting the Gothic Quarter, discard the map and just let yourself wander. The neighbourhood isn't that big, so you'll probably end up at top spots by mindlessly strolling. Some suggested taking part in a walking tour if you're interested in learning the history behind the neighbourhood. At 2, Mercat de San Josep de la Boqueria, or Boqueria Market. Even if you're not keen on visiting the touristy Las Ramblas, make the trek to the thoroughfare only for it to lead you to the foodie heaven that is the Boqueria Market. The Boqueria Market is Barcelona's first local market, having opened in 1840, but its foodie history spans much earlier than that. The first food peddlers were said to have been around as early as the 13th century, selling meat on the streets. The market you see today wasn't around back then. It took four years to construct once St. Joseph's convent left the area, hence the name of the market. Today that tradition of hawking goodies lives on and the covered marketplace treats visitors to the vibrant colours and enticing aromas of everything from fruit juices and wines to fresh fish, meats, produce and desserts. Make sure to grab Spanish specialities while you're there, including jamón ibérico, manchego cheese and salted cod or bacalao. What's more, bars and restaurants can be found in and around the market, so food options truly abound here. And finally, drum roll please, for number one, Parc Guel. Anthony Gaudi's Parc Guel is as whimsical as parks can get. The park was originally supposed to be a housing community for the rich, commissioned by Eusebi Guel. Guell hired Gaudi, but the project eventually folded due to the land's incompatible building conditions. Gaudi continued on, modelling the park after gardens he had seen in England – Guell means English in Catalan – and building around the natural elements of the land instead of tearing them down. Today's park covers 42 acres of space and features everyday park props with a twist that is quintessentially Gaudi. Instead of numerous benches spread throughout, here visitors will be greeted with one long wavy stone bench adorned with vibrant mosaics and equipped with views of the ocean. You'll also find plenty of picturesque pathways that weave along verdant vegetation, down cascading tiled staircases and through jagged stone columns and tunnels. While you're here, don't miss the chance to see the Sala Hipostila. The Sala Hipostila was originally intended to be a marketplace. Today it serves as nothing more than to dazzle visitors with its stately stone columns and beautiful mosaic works, which you'll find dotted all over the ceiling. Other popular attractions here include the Casa Museo Gaudi, Gaudi House Museum, Gaudi's former home turned museum, and Tour de las Tres Creos, a lookout point with pretty impressive views of the city situated in the southwestern point of the park. And there you have the top 10 places to visit in Barcelona. Did you like what you saw? Let us know in the comments down below. Share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fantastic travel guides. See you next time.